Welcome to another VR Basic Bites, where I help you make beginner-friendly VR experiences. Today we're making Cornhole, a fun game we play in the Midwest, like in Ohio. And hopefully it'll end up looking something like this. So, let's get started. Now before we really get started, I want to make note, I'm using 2021.3, and in the Package Manager, the XR Interaction Toolkit is 2.1.1, which is different than previous VR Basic Bytes videos. Um, and with that, I'm in this brand new scene, so I'm just going to build it from scratch. I'm going to right click XR, XR Origin VR, and I'm going to put this up here, get rid of the old main camera. And inside of here, we have our camera that will be my Quest 2 here shortly, and the left hand that thinks it's a right hand, and my right hand that thinks it's a right hand. So <laughs> on the left hand, hit this little slider. And you should have an XRI default left controller. Now nah, it thinks it's a left hand. So there's our controller for the Quest 2. And now let's go ahead and import some models. I'm going to go in the models folder. And the downloads for this zip file is provided in the show notes in the link below. I'm just going to right click, say import new asset. And inside my downloads folder, pretend you didn't see that. Um, right click my zip folder because I need to extract this <laughs> and hit extract and there's my cornhole models inside another folder there's my cornhole board and my pillow cushion which is going to be my beanbag and there's actually a lot more to these um, than what we want so I'm going to throw them both into the scene and kind of build them first um, so these are kind of packed prefab so I'm going to right click this in the hierarchy and unpack it and same for this one unpack that because inside this pillow cushion we don't want the camera or the lamp in fact all I really want is this so I'm just gonna pull this out actually just get rid of that whole thing we'll call this bean bag let's make this the orange one I'm gonna make an orange and a blue one and my cornhole board we don't want that camera. We don't want this lamp. We'll do our own lighting. And there we go. Now, as for the materials, also provided in the link, um, when you uh, go to the link and say add to my assets, um, now when you go to the Windows Package Manager and I go to my assets, down at the bottom I have the world materials free. We're going to import and there's a bunch of stuff I don't quite need so we're gonna make some modifications here on this window that pops up I'm gonna collapse these things so we can just uncheck the things we don't need um, really all we need is a universal render pipeline because that's what this project is made with and the resource files so basically everything else we can uncheck except for those two and hit import give that a second and then when I close this now I have a world materials free um, and actually I'm probably just gonna end up making my own resource or my own uh, materials from the resources like we have the aged dark wood um, I think that'll end up a lot nicer if we went with these they're probably gonna start out pink yeah which isn't always horrible, but it's looking for a shader that's not there because <laughs> I didn't import it. You could have imported the uh, the shaders that they provide and go from there, but I'm just going to make my own materials. Um, so let's just do that real quick. Create material. I'm going to call this wood dark. I'm going to copy and paste that and make this one wood light paste it again and make a fabric orange and we'll make a copy of that one I can't tell which one's which there we go make that one our blue one now for the wood dark I'm gonna open up my resource files aged dark wood and I'm gonna drag that into my base map 
And before I forget, I might as well apply these materials so I can actually watch things happening. I'll apply the dark wood to that part. And then let's make this the orange one, which is not orange yet. Um, but for my wood here, it's like really zoomed in on the wood there. Um, so if you scrub these numbers or these letters here, ooh, let's try like a 10 by 10. That looks more like wood would look like at that scale. And then this fabric orange, I'm going to drop that onto that. And I have a, what is it? Plain fabric. There we go. So I'm going to throw that. Oops. I should probably click on the material first, huh? Fabric orange. There we go. So there's our plain fabric. I'm going to throw that in there. It's got a nice little fabric y material. And I'm not real good with colors, but I'm pretty sure that's kind of an orangey color. That looks pretty good. I know the scale's not right, but that's okay. And then for this other wood chunk here, it's this top piece. Um, let's do the wooden flooring. That'll be our light. So let's go to materials, our wood light. Go down on my wooden flooring and throw that into that. And I didn't actually drag this onto anything. There we go. And that tiling looks way off. Let's see. Something around there. Let's go two by two. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now I have to apply this wood light to all these little pieces. So do that quick. And then let's make one more material for, call this, bolts. And we'll throw that onto these little pieces here and here. And hit F to focus on there. And then my bolts, I'm going to use this uh, brushed iron looking thing. And I might just darken that a little bit. There we go. There. Doesn't look too bad. And our scales are way off, but that's okay. We'll do better. Let's make that like a 10 by 10 by 10. It's, it's going to end up having a uh, box collider on it instead of a mesh collider because it's going to be VR and I want it to work very efficiently. So, yeah, that'll probably work. We'll collapse that cornhole board and let's throw a plane in here and we'll make that kind of our ground. We'll put that at zero, zero, zero. And let's go ahead and throw like a, a grass on there. So let's create a, another material. Call this grass. And I think I have grass clumps. Sounds lovely. And I should probably apply that material. Whoa, that scaling is way off. Tile that again. Maybe something like a 4x4. Four four. Yeah, it's not bad. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to need a little table. We're going to need some other things and a little bit of coding. I'm going to set the play focus to play maximized. And when I actually test this in the headset, you'll notice a problem. Well, several problems really. We're up in the air and our hands are not tracking. So. We need to fix that. You may have noticed in the console, it says uh, the input tracking is enabled, but uh, this is disabled. Um, what we need to do is on the XR origin, we need to add a component and start typing input. And we want the input action manager, hit the little plus sign there, and then the little target radio button. And you may see two of these, you may see one. Now, interestingly, what I found out was this I'm using 2.1.1, so I tried that one, and oddly, the controllers did not track. And I think because I upgraded from an older version of the Interaction Toolkit. And so this one actually did work. So I'm going to stick with this one, even though I don't know why. If you know why, leave a comment. <laughs> um, but this, then, will actually work. 
There, there's, I'm not holding the other controller. There we go. So I can actually track my controllers and that's what we want. All right, several things we want to do to make this experience a lot better. First of all, my XR Origin. Um, I'm going to set the tracking mode to device. And so I don't have to turn around every time. I'm just gonna throw a 180 in there. And can I see my board? Yeah, there's the board, okay. Well, we'll start at about right there. We'll see how that goes. Oop, I'm right on the board. That'll be better. Okay. Now, we need to add several things to this XR Origin. Um, one is going to be, I want it to be what gets teleported around when I teleport. So if I add component and say teleportation provider, in other words, this is the thing that's moving, it's providing that. Um, I also want this to be the snap turn provider. So what that means is with, I'm going to use my right joystick. When I press left and right on that, it'll turn me in 45 degree increments. So I need to make this a snap turn provider, uh, action based and locomotion system. Do we have a locomotion system? Not yet. So we need to add that to locomotion system. And inside that locomotion system, we need to tell it, Hey, the XR origin, this is the thing that will be, will be locomoted, I guess, locomoting. Um, there we go. So now it says, okay, what's the locomotion system? Well, you can just drag this right inside of there. And the teleportation provider, that's the XR origin. And no delay. All right, that looks good there. Now, in order to teleport around this entire ground, I'm going to make one big teleportation area so I can teleport anywhere in the grass. So we go in here and hit teleportation area. By the way, if you don't search, you can look at all the available scripts under locomotion. If you go to XR, uh, locomotion, and so I'm going to have my left hand do a continuous move, which is like a first person shooter type movement. It can make some people sick, so it's not the best to publish with this, but for testing, it makes it nice to move around a scene. Um, the ground is not going to be this, but, um, the ground is going to be a, uh, teleportation area. So I'm going to search that, make a teleportation area, custom reticle. I like the round one, so if you're in assets, search for RET. I like the uh, circular one. Teleportation provider, remember we put that component on the XR origin, so we can just drag that in there. And world space up, that all looks good. Now, my left hand, I want that to be able to do the continuous movement thing. So I'm going to look for continue, there it is, move provider action based. In my right hand, I want to add, I want to add the uh, snap turn provider action based that'll turn me in 45 degree increments. That locomotion system there is on the XR origin, so we can drag that in there. And I don't want the left hand to snap and slide me around, so I'm going to uncheck that for the snap turn. Also on the XR origin, oh, I already have it on here actually. I have it on here twice now. Um, so I actually don't need this one on the right hand. If I have it on the XR origin, I can then just check mark which hand I want to use. I don't want the left hand to snap turn around. So I'm going to just leave it on the XR origin and that'll handle the left and right hand. Well, just the right hand, I guess. And my left hand will be a continuous movement. Um, locomotion system. All right, let's test it and see where we are. Now I'm in VR here. My left joystick kind of glides me around and my right joystick can just turn in 45 degree increments. Either hand can teleport me uh, when I pull the trigger on the left hand or the right hand. Um, we got several adjustments to make. One, got to rotate this board. We got to give uh, some colliders on there. Got to be able to pick up this bean bag, etc. So several things to do. Let's keep moving. Uh, one other thing I noticed was um, I didn't have my XR origin and camera offset set right. So I put my XR origin, it just zeroed out the um, Y position. And then under camera offset, I put it to about 1.6. You can think of this as kind of like in meters. 
if everything's scaled roughly correctly. So if I set this to maximize and hit play, now when we start out and when we teleport, it should still be roughly the same height. So here we are, and then I teleport, and I'm still roughly the same height. So that looks good. Let's keep going. All right, now let's make this a little more realistic. Let's get this uh, cornhole board rotated. Oops. I think I used about negative 8.6, roughly. And we'll go eh, ish. There we go. And the bean bag orange. We're going to want this to have a rigid body, which is going to apply gravity, of course. And I'm going to leave all the defaults for now. I'll adjust them after I play test a little bit. Um, but I also want to make that um, able to be picked up or grabbable. So if I search for XR or just grab, XR grabbable. And we don't need a custom reticle or anything. Um, let's just leave that alone for now. And also for the cornhole board. So a couple of things. Obviously, we want it to be able to fall through the hole right there. And if I click on this one particular piece, that's the piece that's going to need a mesh collider. In other words, it's going to be the exact thing you see here. The 3D model is going to be the collider. I think of it as like a piece of wire mesh that you very tightly wrap an object with, like wrapping tinfoil around something. That becomes the collider. So cube.008 is apparently it. I hit control Z there to put it back. Um, so I'm just going to make a note here that this is the whole piece, not hold, whole, whole piece. There we go. Um, and then everything else will just have a um, box collider. So I'm going to highlight this whole chunk and do a, whoops, box collider all of this box colliders and there we go so if i look through here each one of these if i hit edit collider you can see that's the collider piece there this piece here doesn't matter that it's actually a triangle but it's colliding as though it's a rectangle because it's not going to interfere with the hole at all and our one whole pieces collider um, Oh, we need a mesh collider. Whew, almost forgot that. Uh, mesh collider. There we go. Mesh collider. There we go. So now the bag should go through the hole and land on everything else. So we have it grabbable. We're going to be able to pick it up with Raycast at the moment, but that's okay. Makes it for easy testing. Let's play and see. <laughs> and uh, those of you paying close attention will probably know that when I play tested that off recording, uh, the beanbag just fell through because the beanbag does not have a collider on it. It has a rigid body, so it just falls forever. Um, let's make it a box collider for now. If we made it a mesh collider, yeah, it'd be more accurate to that kind of clothy shape. Um, but I don't want the um, processing expense of tracking a mesh collider. So let's go with a box collider for now for that beanbag. I'm just going to add that box collider. And maybe we'll actually tighten it up just a little bit here. Eh, something like that. And real quick before we play test, um, I'm going to just make this a prefab first of all. So I'm going to drag that into my prefabs. And then I'm going to duplicate a bunch of these just to kind of see how it interacts with different pieces of it. And let's take these. Control D is what I'm using, by the way. And let's Control D that again. And we'll take this one and throw in there. And whoops. There. All right. Now let's play Maximize. Let's see what we're looking at. All we're testing is the physics of the beanbag versus the board. Um, that should fall through there. Oh, it's box collider, of course, so... Yeah, that goes. That's pretty accurate, I guess. We may need to adjust the collider. Oh, it's not too bad, actually. Uh-oh. It falls through parts up here. I'm not there. But right there it does. I wonder if that has to do with the thinness of the collider. It's not quite catching it. 
Let's adjust. Let's hide these for a second. This has a this collider right here. I'm going to make that a little thicker. Make sure it doesn't go through that piece. And I'm also going to add another box collider. And I'm just going to customize this so that it is basically surrounding that piece of the hole. Um, let's bring that way up. We don't want that there. I'm basically making a top, left, and bottom chunk. Um, oops. There we go. So this piece will go about right there. We'll bring it up. And we're going to stretch this out to roughly there to make sure nothing falls through there. And we'll bring that about right there. Okay, we got this one. Let's go ahead and copy that and paste as new and set the center of that second one over here-ish. I'll do a little hand adjustment here. Make sure nothing falls through there. And I kind of like this, so I'm going to do one more paste as new. And this last one, let's move up the Z a little bit. I know it's extending way past. However, we can change the center of that one to be in there. And not cover up the hole. Let's see if that doesn't help the bag falling through. Bring these back in, shift click, activate those, play test. Let's see what we're looking at now. All right. So, and I'm using the thumbstick to kind of push it around, which I know is a cheat. We'll take that out later. Oops, Oops. I'm really bad at this. There we go. Why don't I just go right above it, huh? Good. Good. Pretty good. Pretty good. It seems to be a lot more accurate now. It's not falling through the board. Although it is actually, some of those bags are halfway through. We're going to have to adjust that bag just a little more. But hey, it's not perfect, right? We're not putting this on the App Store or anything. It's actually pretty good. All right, now we're going to make a user interface to be able to keep score. So under Game Object, UI, I'm going to start with an image and then just put text on top of that. So if I start with that, it makes this huge uh, white image. Um, the canvas, if you get this, some values driven by canvas, it's because the render mode is screen space, which is like a sticker stuck to the front of your reading glasses. You can't get it out of your way. <laughs> so I want this on world space. I'm going to drop this scale down to 0.1s, zero out those positions, zero out these positions, and now I have still a much too large. <laughs> this canvas, let's go like uh, I don't know, 80 by like 60, and then the image, drop that to like 0.2 scale. Just makes it more manageable. So I have my uh, left hand on the Q, W, E, R, T keys. Um, so Q is like the hand to pan around. And then W is your move, E is your, your rotate, and R is your scaling. So we can just scale it very easily right here. Um, so if I go to the canvas, hold right mouse button and zoom out, I can shrink that canvas down move it up, maybe even shrink it down a little more, move it back down into position, and now we're talking much more manageable. I can scale that guy up, let's just make it a little, oops, a little wider, you know, something along those lines, and then we'll take the whole canvas and just rotate it, uh, I don't know, negative 90, I think. We'll see if that works. Whoa, I'm typing in shortcut keys and I'm still over there. There we go. There's that. And now we have a place to put our score. 
move that down a little bit. And I'm going to add a couple of things. Well, one, I'm actually going to make this image. I'm going to set it to black, but drop the uh, alpha down, and that'll put white text on top of it. So on my canvas now, I'll right click UI Text Mesh Pro. That's the real crisp, nice text. Well, oh, you can tell I did the canvas backwards. Um, this will be the orange label. Uh, canvas, you need to be positive 90, apparently. There we go. And for this orange label, um, let's set that scale. Let's go to like 0.2s. That looks pretty good. Put this over here, right there, and I'll just say orange. I guess I don't need a space there. Um, and that's just going to be containing that text. It's not going to do anything else. And then I'll control D on that to duplicate it. This will be the well, blue label. I could say blue and then tighten that up a little bit. And then I'm going to actually duplicate that again. This will be the blue score. So this is the value we're going to change with code. Um, that will start as a zero. Go and then we'll click there and control D again. We'll call this orange score. Put that by the orange. There we go. So we've got our user interface at least set up. Yeah, that's kind of bothering me too. It's probably bothering somebody watching this. That needs to be a little more centered. There we go. Maybe we can make it a little fancier later if we want to, but at least we have it all set up so that now we can start um, coding uh, to get all of that started. While I'm here, um, let's go ahead and make some uh, bean bags that have the orange or the uh, blue on it. We've made our orange prefab. Let's just duplicate that. And no surprise, we're going to call this bean bag blue. Let's just throw one out here and see what it looks like. Then our material, our fabric blue, drop that right onto there. Be helpful if it was actually blue. So being colorblind, I kind of rely on these things sometimes. Drop, the, <laughs> drop these values. I know that's blue then, so anything in here is kind of a shade of blue. Let me get in here. That looks pretty nice. Orange, blue. Very nice. Okay. Save that. That way we have something to uh, throw into the cornhole hole and get some points. Let's do some coding.